Amelia Papke is the Portland-based social entrepreneur and food access advocate. As an MBA student at PSU, she discovered social entrepreneurship and an unexpected career calling. While still in school, Amelia developed the concept for My Street Grocery, a novel social enterprise that soon received nationwide attention and accolades. A grocery store on wheels, My Street Grocery, improves fresh food access and strengthens communities through innovation, innovative distribution techniques and partnerships with health providers and community organizations. In 2013, Pig brought My Street Grocery into Whole Foods Market to advance the scope and scale of its reach. Please welcome you. to give a little talk at this event, I spent probably three to five seconds feeling flattered and fairly quickly moved into that space of questions, questioning myself. What do I have to say? The people in this audience are my teachers and my mentors. This is a room of change makers and innovators. What do I have to say to you? What do I know? I have a friend who's an entrepreneur and we get together as regularly as we can and when we do, we call it boss lady meetings. <laughs> and what happens at the majority of our boss lady meetings is that we talk about how we don't really know what we're doing. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> People are looking at us, asking us for answers because we're the boss ladies, but we feel like we don't know. And that's a really easy road to go down, to question yourself, to just wonder, what am I doing here? So, since I'm here on the stage, just for right now, I'm gonna just set that aside. I'm gonna just refocus, take a little breath. I welcome you to join me for this, it's really nice. I'm just going to give myself permission to not know everything and instead just tell a story. So this story begins with food. And one thing that I know about food is that it's essential. We all need food. I know this because I haven't yet figured out how to live without it. <laughs> how many of you have eaten food before? <laughs> You're not all raising your hand. <laughs> So we all have this in common. It's universally essential, and yet, for millions of people in this country, it's inaccessible. Can you believe that? 23.5 million people. That's shocking. That was so shocking to me that I felt like I wanted to do something about it. Why not me? I want to be a social entrepreneur. I want to solve this problem. Maybe I can change the world. So, I designed a social enterprise. People can't get to food, let's bring food to them. My Street Grocery is a mobile grocer with a mission to improve fresh food access. Yeah, right. I wrote a business plan, I revised it a million times, I pitched it a million times, many people in this audience helped me along the way and heard me pitch it. I vetted it in the community, I understood the need here in Portland, I even raised money via Kickstarter, and I bought a mobile grocery store. It looks like a box truck, but it's a mobile grocery store. Just trust me, it's my business, I know. And then it was time to launch, and everyone was congratulating me on my success. I had started a business, and then I had to run it. And that's a whole different story. And what I learned fairly quickly was that there were all kinds of holes in this business model. It just kept popping up. How am I going to keep my cost of goods under control as this tiny little business? I can't raise my prices because I'm trying to be accessible. I don't have enough capacity to sell as much as I need. I can't pay myself 
By the way, it rains a lot here, and I'm trying to do business outside. Uh-oh. I feel like a failure again. What am I going to do? I feel like being an entrepreneur is a lot like being blindfolded and walking down a road that's bumpy that may or may not end in a cliff. It feels like you're constantly making these really big decisions, and it feels like you never have quite enough information to make an informed one. But I'm stubborn, and I also realized that I really cared about this. And I learned that some people in the community really cared about it too, and really needed it. And I couldn't do it alone. So I did something that I'm not very good at, which was ask for help. And when I thought about what kind of help I needed, I thought, okay, I don't, I don't just want money. I don't just want employees. I think I want a parent. I want someone who will take my little company, which, like my career as an entrepreneur, was in its infancy, and allow it to grow. Train it, teach it, let it be what it's meant to be, not try to change it. Someone who shared the values that I held dear. And so I found Whole Foods Market. And it turns out, Improving lives through food is part of the core fabric of Whole Foods Market as a company. And together we decided that improving fresh food access for all was a mission worth pursuing. So, we made My Street Grocery 2.0 by Whole Foods Market, also known as Molly the Trolley, sometimes just Molly. Some people think that I'm Molly now. <laughs> really on the trolley of Molly. But man, that looks like a mobile grocery store. That's pretty cool. We have onboard refrigerators and freezers. We have the highest quality standards for our products. Indoor shopping space to solve for that whole weather problem. We designed a really cool mobile grocery store. But guess what? This is a social enterprise, and now I'm an intrapreneur, and I not only have to stay true to my mission, I have to teach my colleagues and my company what it means to be a social intrapreneur, to serve a social mission. So we need to talk about that a little bit more. What is this whole food access thing that we're trying to solve? Yes, geography is a problem. But what about all the other stuff? The stuff that you can't see on a map, like time, money, cultural appropriateness, social appropriateness, storage, cooking skills. The stigma, the shame that you might feel when you have to ask for help. Imagine what it must feel like to not know how to provide for yourself. Maybe some of you have felt that before. When I first started at Whole Foods Market, part of my pitch was, hey, I was an entrepreneur already. I know how to do this. This is my business. I'll handle it. <laughs> and I thought that I had to know everything, and I had to project this air of strength and confidence. I got this. I can anticipate every problem before it comes. Heck, I do yoga on cliffs. I'm just that kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> Except that's Clearly a stock photo. <laughs> Never done yoga on the cliff. And more often, I just felt kind of like I wanted to hide. Because I didn't know everything. And I didn't want people to know that. I didn't want them to know that although I had created my dream job, I am now the food access coordinator for Whole Foods Market, the first one in the whole company. And I just felt like I was drowning. I imagine that there's some maybe small similarity to the feeling of not knowing where your next meal is going to come from and having to ask for help. So we need more help. 
We need to understand our mission a little bit more. We need to unpack it more. How are we going to solve this problem, this deep, complicated, difficult to see problem? We need to provide choices, resources, and relationships to our customers. And we can't do that alone. We need more lifelines. We need to ask for help. And through that, that's how we found some partners. And we learned that choosing people who have expertise and things that we don't, but that are all serving the same mission of improving our communities, improving lives, that's powerful. And that's when I started to see the needle move in our work. One of the coalitions that I love is our partnership with Portland Public Schools and the I Have a Dream Foundation. We serve Title I schools in the Portland area, and we give children the power to make healthy choices. We host an on-site market, so the My Street Grocery is there when school lets out, and we pair that with educational programming and with financial support for families. I love that picture of those kids. Another partnership that I love is one that represents our belief that food has the power to heal. We partner with clinics and hospitals where patients who have screened positive for food insecurity are eligible to participate in a food prescription program. We have on-site markets, they come to the doctor, they get medical guidance, they get financial support through their vouchers. And we've done this for about four years now, and we've been able to see a little bit of positive health outcomes in some of our participants, which is exciting. The majority of our participants are showing that they're maintaining or improving their diabetes management. They're improving depression. They're losing weight. Their weekly intake of fruits and vegetables is going up. Really cool stuff. But one of the things on here that I found really interesting is depression. What does that have to do with food? Why is that there? What we found our customers saying was not, by the way, I'm maintaining or improving my diabetes management. <laughs> they were saying, I'm happy you're here. I tried a new food today. I made myself a meal. I shared a meal. I met a friend at the market. Food is essential to our well-being, yes. But it also can do more. It has the power to bring us joy. And that was so powerful, that lesson was so powerful to me that it's time for a mission statement update. <laughs> Everything that we do should be about celebrating the joy of food. And that phrase actually exists in Whole Foods Market's higher purpose statement for the whole company. The joy of food. This is an evolution of purpose. My Street Grocery is about food access, but what more can we do with food? <coughs> this is Jordan. He's been a customer of ours for four years now, and he so generously and so courageously shared his story with us in a letter that he wrote in 2014, which I'm going to share with you right now. He says, to whom it may concern, I'd like to take this opportunity as a client of Legacy Good Samaritan to thank My Street Grocery. I would not be able to eat and have the quality of food that's fresh and healthy if it wasn't for this program. My health since this project started has improved 50%, which I never thought was possible. There are no words to fully express my gratitude for the personal touch of the My Street Grocery team and their passion to see people's lives being changed by this program. My life is being transformed by the services you're providing to me. My street inspires me to become the best, and they genuinely care about helping people like myself to have a healthier life. It's always a joy to see the My Street team each week at the market. They're a breath of fresh air in my life. I see them as part of my support team. This has been the happiest year of my life, and My Street Grocery has been a major part of that happiness. Dreams become reality if you wish hard enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you from Jordan and Charity, his dog. <laughs> wow, thank you, Jordan. That taught me so much. 
This is not just about bringing food to people. This is about building community. That's the power of food. My Street Grocery is a mobile grocer with a mission to improve fresh food access and build community by introducing choices, resources, and relationships that celebrate the joy of food. I know that's a mouthful, but so is this work. Food is community. At Whole Foods Market, we have a tradition where every time we open a new store, we invite the community to come out with us and we bring this gigantic loaf of bread and together we break it. Breaking bread. We do this at My Street Grocery now too. There's a reason that we use that to describe coming together. Food brings people together. Food is community. That's my story. So, why me? Why am I here? I want to change the question. Why not me? Why not Jordan, who taught me so much from his story? Why not you? What's your story? I think that the idea of finding your purpose is really powerful and really attractive and really important. But sometimes it's daunting. What if I don't know what my purpose is? Maybe this is my purpose, but it doesn't feel like it. What if I'm not living up to my whole purpose? Am I failing? I'm failing at life. I'm failing. <laughs> well, let's just, for a second, put that aside and change the question. Instead of asking, what's your purpose? Why not ask, what do you know? What's your story? And when you get comfortable with that, are you willing to share? Are you willing to share your story with others? When I was launching My Street Grocery 2.0 at Whole Foods and I was freaking out all the time because I was on a deadline and I had this never-ending task list and half of the tasks I didn't understand because they were in this corporate lingo that I hadn't learned yet and I just was going crazy, my boss and mentor said to me once, Amelia, you have an army behind you. You just need to remember to turn around. We all have the ability to contribute, and we can always contribute more as a community than we can alone. But we can't build community if we're not willing to share our stories with one another. Brene Brown is this amazing researcher, and I watch her TED Talk regularly. And in it, she reminds us that vulnerability may be the core of fear and shame and self-doubt but it also happens to be that spark that drives creativity and innovation and connection and community. If we're willing to step into that space, to share our stories with one another, to build community, to acknowledge the army that we all have behind us, that's how we create community and within community, we find empathy. And when we create empathy in the world, we change the world. That's all I got. Thank you.